longer a novelty to pilots and technicians of the Belgian Airlines. Already in 1950, these machines were used for a regular postal service. And in 1953, Belgium opened up the first international helicopter routes. 300 feet above chimney tops, towers and spires, these strange looking machines offer passengers an original view of familiar places. to the fashion of the day, queens summon this air taxi to their door. Arriving from the New World in October 1956, the first two S-58s appeared off the coasts of the Balearic Islands before landing at Barcelona. Turn call, perhaps, for its 400 years since the Santa Maria set forth to discover the new world. Today, the pace has changed. The modern machine with the rotary wings sets off for Paris. October 4th, and these two craft are flying against the clock. Plus Bella to Alley Vert in seven to six minutes. A record for the flight between the heart of Paris and the heart of Brussels. March the 3rd, 1957, Brussels Heliport. A whole armada is launched for the peaceful conquest of Paris. For short distances, these handy aerial taxicabs challenge the speediest greyhounds of the air. They fly over Noyon, a little after Compiègne. When the plane for Le Bourget takes off, the helicopter passenger has already ordered his morning cocktail at the Place de l'Opera. People find the helicopter the best way of avoiding traffic congestion and holdups in the crowded cities. The Arc de Triomphe, the Eiffel Tower, the Champs Elysees. And not far from Place Bellard, Issy Les Moulineaux, where French aviation grew its wings. Blériot, Farman, Voisin, they dream. Fifty years have already passed. And here's a diversion. Between morning coffee and cocktail time, these Paris mannequins take to the air for a lightning fashion show in Brussels. This is the pace of modern life. The rotating wings have moved Melsbrook National Airport to the very doorsteps of Rotterdam, Maastricht, Eindhoven, Duisburg, Dortmund, Cologne, Bonn, Lille and Paris. The network of routes covers the world's most densely populated regions. 
72 million inhabitants live in urban and industrial centers. Brussels, Eindhoven, Diceberg, 70 minutes. The vast intercontinental and international network of Belgian airlines can be compared to the circulation of the blood. The vital arteries are served by aircraft, while a capillary system enables the rotating wings to penetrate to the very heart of the cities. Diceberg Dortmund in less than 20 minutes. High above the giant forge of Europe, through the smoke of the cities of coal, fire and steel. Turning from this fiery limbo, we come to the West Fallenhalle, great sports palace of the Ruhr. Terminal point on the line, Dortmund, famous for its brewery. Helicopters provide a link between the Seine, the Rhine, the Meuse and the Skelt. Antwerp intermediate stop between the Belgian capital and the Netherlands. Delft, immortalized by Vermeer, where ancient buildings are a perfect setting for the blazing glory of the flower garden. Less colorful, maybe, but just as picturesque are the costumes of the folk of Volunda. Silent and hardworking, these fisher folk match this quaint old harbor. A contrast to the great port of Rotterdam, proudly stretching for 18 miles along the river, where the Rhine shipping plies to and fro. This river mouth port has also a helicopter terminal, and from here you leave for Cologne. Cologne, where the tides of many civilizations have encroached and receded, where the old and the new dwell together in harmony. Quaint legendary characters, these small fellows seem very much alive beneath their surface of stone. Whether on foot, by car, train, boat or helicopter, one must ascend the Rhine to reach Bonn. Drachenfels standing guard over the Falsen Rhine, final chord of the Song of the Hills, where a new symphony begins, the Rhine of romance and legend. Bakara, where there once lived a maiden, the Lorelei. Many songs have been sung and legends told of her fatal enchantment. The Faust standing sentinel in the middle of the Rhine. Guardian of Touraine, Amboise on the Loire. Along its banks unfolds the history of France. A sign of the times, the seeker of new sensations obtains with ease the Tour de Menin. Carriages once drove to the top of this tower up wide, gently sloping ramps. France is the first king of France and lord of Amboise 
offered Claude Lusset to his friend Leonardo da Vinci. This famous painter of the Mona Lisa was also an inspired inventor. Leonardo sketched an idea for a flying machine 500 years ago. He is said to be buried in the chapel of St. Hubert, patron saint of hunting. Its magnificent front glorifies the chase. Cheverny, where they still hunt with hounds. Chambord, Royal Hunting Lodge. Here Francis I engraved on a window, woman is fickle and foolish he who trusts her. Valley of the Loire, valley of poets and writers. It was here in the manner of Sachet that Balzac was inspired to write his lease dans la vallée. In this peaceful priory of Combe, Ronsard wrote his odes, soaring to the heights of immortal poetry. What a dwelling for a woman. What a dwelling, sire, for a queen of France. Bridging the Cher, magnificent Chenonso Castle was for three centuries to be the home of the queens of France. Diane de Poitiers, Catherine de Medici, Mary Stuart, Louise de Lorraine. Proud and still, these graceful birds are mirrored in the waters of the chateau of Aze Laredo. And here is Villandre, another gem of Touraine, the garden chateau of the Garden of France. Ousay, an early Renaissance castle, still clings to its feudal defenses, like Chaumont, where Catherine de' Medici spent whole nights listening enthralled to the prophecies of Nostradamus. Thanks to the helicopter, we have this unique glimpse of Loche, a complete medieval town and castle hardly changed by the passing of time. Dungeon keep, towers, king's residence, church, small streets winding round the ramparts, a fairy tale city of the Middle Ages. Finest of all the art treasures of Touraine, the windows of the Chapel of St. Louis recount the life of this most saintly King of France. And here to the chateau of Chinon came Joan of Arc to arouse the Dauphin from his lethargy. Even today, many ancient dwellings still cling to the mighty ramparts of one of the finest examples of medieval fortification. High above the Vienne, La Diviniere, birthplace of Rabelais and also of Gargantua. When twilight falls, the curie of Moudon seems to watch over the old royal city and the mighty laugh of Pantagruel seems still to echo. After the landmarks of history come the landmarks of industry. Lille with its heliport close to the main station and near to the great palace which houses the trade and industrial fairs of northern France. A flight of one hour and twenty minutes brings you to another great industrial town, another great fair, another heliport, Liège. By careful timing of its flights, the helicopter service eases transit, customs, and entry formalities. At the heliport, passengers lose none of the precious time gained by air travel. A flight of 280 miles is the best distance for the S-58. Twelve important cities situated in four neighboring countries share five regular lines. Placed end to end, the line would stretch for a total of only 843 miles. In one year, the helicopters cover 937,000 miles, transport 50,000 passengers, and make 30,000 landings and takeoffs. 
By following the course of the Mers, you come to Maastricht. The old city grew up round a bridge. Its now dismantled ramparts recall a turbulent history of siege and pillage. But the helicopter cannot always linger over these memories of the past. Other missions are waiting at its home terminal. We take a sudden leap across the Atlantic. For in this supersonic age of flashing speed, aviation has almost done away with distance. In one year, the 77 machines of the Belgian air fleet cover a distance equal to 800 times the Earth's circumference. They carry nearly 700,000 passengers and 20,000 tons of freight. They link 104 towns, 38 countries and four continents. Winter and summer at Idlewild Airport, the transcontinental aircraft waits for its last minute passengers. Faster, always faster, in order to gain time. The modern comfort of these flying palaces ensures that the passenger arrives fresh and fit at the airport. From here he can commute to other destinations. No time is lost, the air taxi is waiting ready to take off. This soaring landmark, the Eiffel Tower, stands little more than a mile from the helicopter terminal in Place Ballard. The Paris of your dreams, Paris where you come with a smile on your lips, which you never leave without regret. the neon lights, another world is revealed of glamour and gaiety, where the age-old quest for happiness is set to a modern rhythm. Follow the call of these crystal chimes and they'll carry you to the famous Salzburg carry-on. to see even further. Man never satisfied strives to push back the encircling horizons. A modern magic carpet, the airplane can transport you to the haunts of legend and fairy tale. You can answer the haunting call of the little mermaid. The spirit of this city by the sea was caught and enshrined by Hans Andersen in his immortal fairy tales, the delight of Danish children, of children the world over.
Here in sharp contrast is Stockholm, the modern city. In this surge of new buildings, her legendary past is forgotten. It's carnival time, the time when northern people leave their gray mists for the blue Mediterranean skies. Nice will cure all ills, those of the peevish, the ill-tempered, the angry, the grumblers and the grouses. No Neapolitan ever wants to leave his town, and who could blame him? At the foot of slumbering Vesuvius, beaches nestle in small bays, happy retreats where you can relax and dream in the sunshine. In the same latitudes, under the same blue skies, the Balearic Islands, Majorca, Valdemosa. La Chartreuse, Georges Sand, Frédéric Chopin, the epilogue to an immortal love. This famous figure brings us to other shores, the Ramblers in Barcelona, where every night you can hear the click of the castanets and the stirring rhythms of Spanish dancing. Easter week in Seville, an unforgettable spectacle of countless, endless processions. Decked with precious jewels, amid a forest of candles, the many virgins of Spain are escorted through the streets by cowed, barefooted penitents. At each halt, a plaintive melody rises. This is the Seita, prolonged by a mournful cry, which sends a tremor through the intensely Catholic soul of Spain. All roads lead to Rome. Here you will find the smallest state in the world, the Vatican City. Amidst this wealth of historic memories, St. Peter's Basilica and the Forum of the Emperors bear witness to an enduring and mighty civilization. The ruins of Pompeii bring to life the far-off days of antiquity. Architecture. The Middle East, where ancient and modern civilizations meet. The camel ship of the desert has sailed the desert sands for 5,000 years. The Muslim faith has spread throughout the ancient land of the Pharaoh. The Muezzin's call to prayer is heard along the banks of the Nile. Following its broad stream, you'll reach the heart of mysterious Africa.
some 19,000 miles of airways weave a web across the Belgian Congo. They provide the easy and rapid link so indispensable to the economic, social, and cultural needs of this vast reserve, where all races live together in harmony. Spreading beyond the horizons, the invisible threads of the air routes multiply unceasingly. And so, each day, some new means of communication is created. Some new contact is made between men, peoples, races, religions, and civilizations.